I'm going to be telling you a true scary story about the children who lived in my woods called the Lost Boys. As a kid, I would always play in the woods behind my house. And as a kid, I loved playing in them because I had a whole bunch of friends who lived in the woods. And you might be thinking, um, kids don't live in the woods. And that's exactly right because they were actual ghosts. But as a kid, I did not know that. I would go out every single day and there was about 10 boys who would play with me. We would build tree forts, we would play hide and seek, chase, everything. I invited them over for dinner all the time, but they told me that they couldn't leave. That they were stuck in the woods. I didn't understand, but I just let them be. I would always bring my friends out there and none of them could see them. Everyone just told me I was crazy. But that was until I went missing for two days because one of the boys told me to come with him. So I did. He took me really, really far back into the woods and I was super lost. And things started to go really bad. Stay tuned for part two. This is part two to the true scary story of the lost boys in the back of my woods. As I was saying in part one, I'd play with these boys all the time. One day, one of the boys took me very far back into the woods and I pretty much went missing. I got super, super lost and couldn't find my way back home. The boy told me he wanted me all to himself and he didn't want me to go back to my family. He also said he was in love with me, but I don't know how a ghost can be in love with you. He kept saying he was bringing me back home, but I just went farther and farther into the woods. I was super turned around. Almost 24 hours later, my parents and the police found me. When I was in my bedroom that night, I looked out my window to the back of the woods. All 10 boys were standing there staring at my window. I knew that they were very upset with me because they didn't have me to themselves. So, the next day, I went to the outskirts of the woods and just stood there and talked to them. It was very hard for me to stay away because I think I was in love with that ghost too. And that's never good. Stay tuned for part three. This is part three of the true scary story of the lost boys. As I was saying in part two, I was falling in love with one of the ghosts. As much as I knew I needed to stay away from them, I physically couldn't. It was almost like I was in a trance or something because that one boy had my entire heart. All the rest of the boys were really jealous of the fact that we were so close. But I think that his intentions were wrong. He kept trying to get me to go back into the woods and go missing with him. He would constantly grab me and I would end up with scratches on my body. He told me that if I didn't come and play with him every single day that he would find a way to kill me. So why was I in love with a psycho ghost? Or maybe it was a demon. We moved out of this house two years later and I still have dreams about this boy to this day. He shows up all the time telling me if I fall in love with someone else that he will find a way to kill me. Even though he's a ghost, that really scares me. A psychic even told me that a part of his soul is still attached to me. So the moral of the story is don't fall in love with any ghosts. How would you react if you were in your hotel room and some of the furniture started to move around? And then you walk out your door to go to leave and you hear a baby crying from the hallway only to walk out and see absolutely nothing. Well, this is a common experience at the Skirvin Hotel. And while I'm a big fan of ghost hunting and don't really get scared too easily, it is so unsettling to know that so many NBA players will not come back into this hotel again after experiencing paranormal activity. So why is this place so terrifying? Well, the Skirvin Hotel is older than a century. It was built back in 1910 and located in Oklahoma City. The founder of the hotel, William Balzer Skirvin, really wanted a glamorous hotel. It was prohibition during this time, alcohol was still illegal, and this hotel became a booming speakeasy. On top of this, his daughter, Promesta, ended up becoming the ambassador to Luxembourg under Harry Truman. So she brought in so much clout. This hotel quickly got a reputation nationally. But this is when Mr. Skirvin decided to have an affair, which created a horror story. Part two to the Skirvin Hotel. So W.B. Skirvin is described as a man who really liked to have a good time. He liked to drink. He would also chase women. And somewhere along this, he ended up falling for one of his hotel maids named Effie. And while this man was a widower, you still have to remember that this is the early 1900s. So when the affair started, it was extremely scandalous. And Effie ended up getting pregnant. So Mr. Skirvin is like, oh my gosh, I did not just get a maid pregnant. I need to prevent a scandal. And his answer was to lock her in a room on the 10th floor. So Effie stayed in this room until she got to full term, had her baby, and remained locked away. Slowly, she lost her sanity and grew more and more depressed and ended up grabbing her infant and throwing herself along with her baby out of the window of the 10th floor. And from this moment on, so many things have been reported around the hotel, including furniture moving around at night, people just feeling an eerie weight on their chest, 
And because no one could get a decent night's sleep in it, they closed in 1988, but reopened later. Part three to the Skirvin Hotel. So the hotel ended up reopening in 2007 and the reports continued of a baby crying in the hallway and guests in the hotel would walk out and not see anything. And so many men that have stayed there have reported hearing a female voice in their rooms or also seeing the figure of a naked woman while taking a shower. And it was really blown up whenever basketball players started to stay there when they would play in OKC. Derek Rose, who grew up in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Chicago, couldn't spend one night in there without making James Johnson share a room with him. Ron Artest actually thought about filing charges against the Skirvin because the ghost was inappropriately touching him. And Kyrie Irving will most likely be making a movie about the hotel. And Eddie Curry was literally on the 10th floor and had to spend the night in Nate Robinson's room because he got so scared. This man is literally like seven feet. So it really makes me feel like there's something very scary going on. So my best friend and I will be hopping in our car and going down to check out this hotel. We'll be staying the night and vlogging the whole thing for YouTube. So go check it out. Also go over to her account if you want to hear more about the concept of ghost hunting. When you go to sleep tonight, don't do what she did. Once there was a young woman named Alicia who moved into a very old house with her parents, but she could have never expected the horrifying things that this would lead to. After living in this house for a few weeks, things started becoming strange. Alicia noticed she was becoming weaker and feeling sick. Pretty soon, she couldn't leave her bed and was asleep for most of the day. The doctors came to examine her, and everyone wanted to find out what this mysterious sickness was, but no one had any answers, until one day, Alicia passed away while sleeping. Then, after her funeral, her mother came home and with a broken heart began cleaning her room. That's when she noticed something strange about Alicia's pillow. There were two small red stains. She picked it up and realized the pillow was unusually heavy, so she called her husband to go look at it with her. Then Alicia's mother felt something inside the pillow move. Her father opened the pillow and took all the feathers out. There they saw something crawl out. It was a monstrous black spider. Night after night, as Alicia lay in bed, this huge spider had been slowly drinking all her blood through her pillow. Do you guys remember the Momo Challenge? In 2018, the Momo Challenge was trending on the internet and children were the main target. Momo began appearing in cartoons on YouTube channels for kids and began taunting and threatening them. But aside from this, something more sinister was going on behind the scenes. People claiming to be Momo were initiating chats with kids all over the world. Momo convinced children to call a phone number and from there, Momo would make them complete a series of harmful tasks and threaten them if they didn't complete it. The tasks would start simple but would slowly become more disturbing and vile. This included things such as hurting your pet and even convincing kids to take their own lives. On July 25, 2018, a 12-year-old girl in Buenos Aires took her own life in her family's backyard. After looking through her phone, it was apparent that she had been chatting with Momo, who had convinced her to do this. Another incident in Saskatchewan was reported of a 5-year-old boy named Jackson who came across Momo online. Jackson told his mom many times that a chicken lady named Momo was going to take his and his family's life at 3 a.m. Jackson's mom thought he was just having nightmares, but then she noticed multiple red marks on his neck and she had a feeling it was influenced by Momo. There were many theories of who Momo was, but this person or persons were never caught. This is why you should not listen to your teacher. Once something terrifying happened to Sophia when she got to school. She went to class as usual when her teacher burst into the room and said, Sophia, I have some bad news. She was shocked and embarrassed to be called out like that in front of her whole class. Her teacher then said, get your things. I just got off the phone with your father. He said your mom was in a horrible accident and he's going to pick you up now and take you to the hospital. Sophia instantly froze in horror. She tried to explain, but her teacher kept interrupting her. Why are you just standing around? Get your things now. But Sophia wouldn't move. She knew something wasn't right. She said, I don't have a father. He passed away long ago and I never got to meet him. I was raised by a single mother all my life. To this day, Sophia still doesn't know who that man was claiming to be her father and what he planned to do if she had gone with him. Story time about my extremely creepy neighbors. So a little background information, I was 12 years old and I was in 6th grade. And my family and I lived in a really small town where everyone knew everyone. But our new neighbors had been building their house next to us for the past 4 years. And finally when they were done with the house, this house was huge. I mean probably because there were like 8 people moving into the house. There was the mom, the dad, 4 kids, and their grandparents. So like eight people. But I was super excited because I was like, okay, this is awesome. I get to meet some new friends. But after two weeks of not seeing anybody playing in the backyard or anybody on the school bus, I started to think that their family was super fucking weird. 
And everyone in our neighborhood liked to gossip. And everyone was saying how they barely see the people who had just moved in. So my mom decided to take one for the team and make some brownies, take them over to the house. And I ended up going with her. So we go up to the house, we knock on the door. And one of the kids came and opened the door, but the dad ran over and grabbed him. Like for part two. Part two about my extremely creepy neighbors. So like I said, my mom and I took some brownies over there and one of the kids opened the door and when he opened the door, he had a bunch of bruises all over his body. The dad came running over and ripped his son from the door and slammed the door in our faces and all you could hear was him screaming at his son. So my mom and I went to walk away before the door opened and he was like, sorry, my son knows better than to open the door to strangers. We took the brownies and then I asked him if I could have a sleepover with one of his daughters and he was super hesitant at first, but he said that I could only have a sleepover with her if it was at my house and not theirs, which my mom was completely completely fine with anyways because she thought that it was a little bit weird that his son had bruises covering his whole body. So that night when she came over to sleep over my house, I asked her how her brother got all those bruises all over his body and she said that he just fell down some stairs. But after that, we became best friends and we would literally hang out like five times a week until the one day I knocked on their door to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. Like for part three. Part three about my super creepy neighbors. So like I said, I became best friends with their daughter, but the one day I went over her house to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. And when I asked when she would be back, he was like, she went to go live with her mom. So probably never, which was super weird because she never mentioned that she had another mom. So fast forward two months, my family and I are sitting around the fire pit when we hear someone scream help. But we weren't sure if that's what we were actually hearing because it was so quiet. And then all of a sudden we heard someone banging on my neighbor's basement door. You know those metal doors that people usually have outside of their house that lead down basement steps? Yeah, well that's where the banging was coming from. So my dad hopped over the fence to see if that's where the screaming was coming from also. And then not even a minute later, my dad hopped back over the fence and it looked like he saw a ghost. But he ran inside, called 911. Because I was so young, the only thing my parents told me about that whole situation was that the girl that I was friends with was still alive and her parents were keeping her in the basement along with two of her other siblings. But then we also found out that they weren't even her real parents. They were kidnapped at the hospital when they were born.